All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So this is actually maybe a good talk to follow Collins. Um, in the last talk, Colin was talking about privacy, and he mentioned VPNs fit really well under the, uh, the privacy enthusiast model. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about VPNs. Awesome. Um, so uh, I'm Kevin. Uh, I work at ServiceNow on the red team um, and was at Adobe on the red team for five years and uh, was in the intelligence community before that. Um, now I live in Utah and work remotely and I like to be outside with the kids, so hooray for that. Um, who knows what a VPN is? Like, knows the denotation, knows what VPN means. <laughs> yeah, I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, yeah, VPNs are virtual private networks. Who uses who uses a VPN um, for like tunneling their traffic through their ISP, or who uses it so they can watch Netflix in another geo, or who <laughs> or who uses it who uses it for work so that they can actually connect to a private network. So that's how VPNs you know got started. That was the original intention was you have this private network and you're you're physically separate from it, and so. A VPN allows you to connect to a private network over a public network. Um, so the typical use case is to connect one of your devices to a private network, um, or uh, connect, and, and that's the case You know, if you have your laptop and you're working at home and you need to be on the LAN at work, that's how you're gonna use the VPN. Um, another use case is to connect two private networks together, so you sort of have two gateways that um, tunnel traffic between two, two geographically separated networks make it look like they're on the same private LAN. So that's kind of a typical use case for a VPN. Um, as we talked about, uh, they're becoming super popular for just tunneling traffic. Um, and so for whatever reason, privacy, security, anonymity, you can fire up a VPN on your laptop, tunnel all your traffic through it, and then, um, and then things are great. Um, also give you a source IP somewhere else. You can watch your British comedy. Um, this talk is sponsored by all of these VPNs, so that's what I was getting to. If you guys spend any time on YouTube or like pay any attention to your favorite influencer, VPN providers get a lot of their um, get a lot of their user base from affiliate-driven marketing. So you see a lot of that, um, and there are countless options these days. You know, there's VPN companies everywhere. So. Um, so this talk is kind of about VPNs, but more specifically about WireGuard. So WireGuard is a specific implementation of VPN technology. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the technical details. By the way, like half of this is gonna be demos, so I'm gonna kind of roll the dice here. So uh, yeah, be patient with me, but I'm gonna get through slides and we'll do some demos. So, um, so WireGuard is an implementation of VPN technology. Um, it, at this point, as of uh, I think last year, it's integrated into the Linux kernel. It actually creates like a, a uh, network interface um, and does all the things magically behind the scenes there for you, so that's great. Um, and there's a speed advantage over user land VPNs because you're not constantly copying data between the kernel and user space. Um, and although there are, there are user land uh, implementations of WireGuard, and so you know, obviously Windows isn't running the Linux kernel, so there are implementations you can use on Windows and Darwin and, um, and your mobile phones and everything. So, so that's great. Um, and the other thing that's cool about WireGuard is it has a really small code base. I think I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So, Oh, and one other thing. Uh, all those VPNs I put up there earlier use WireGuard. Uh, that's the technology behind all those brands. Um, so some technology spec specifics. Um, those little bubbles on the right um, show kind of like the magnitude of the code base of other VPN options. So IPsec, specifically StrongSwan, is about 420,000 lines of code, which is insane. Like if any of, if any of you have ever done like code audits or um, application pen testing, like you, don't, you would not want to land on that gig, right? <laughs> um, so it's really hard to audit that. Like there's all kinds of, all kinds of, um, risk there, right? And then OpenVPN, uh, 120,000 lines of code, and that's just OpenVPN. But like the, the crypto libraries OpenVPN uses uh, are just OpenSSL, which is another 400-ish thousand lines of code. And as, as 
a lot of you know, it's also uh, like getting pretty aged and uh, there's a lot of tech debt in there. So to use some buzzwords, cross that one off. So, um, so yeah, those are massive projects, right? And then that little dot in the bottom is wire guarded. It's like measly 4,000 lines of code, really easy to audit and just clean and, and fresh, lemony fresh. So um, another nice thing about WireGuard is it's cryptographically opinionated. So like a lot of these other technologies let you use whatever algorithms and they, they negotiate, you know, like a public key algorithm and then they negotiate a symmetric key and a hashing algorithm and they have all these things built in. It's just like this massive surface area. Um, and so what WireGuard has done is they've said, we're going to use these industry standards, these industry favorites. So we use ChaCha Poly for like authenticated cipher. We use Curve 25519 for for any like asymmetric stuff we need, and Blake 2 for uh, hashing and keyed hashing, and then HKDF for key derivation. So we're using these things, and if you don't like these, then you're not going to like us. That's and that's a really really good way to keep the complexity low. Um, on the technology, so that's really cool. Um, they have this notion of crypto key routing. So what you do when you set up your configuration, and you'll see this in the demo, is you take an IP address and you have a public key associated with that, and anything that goes to that IP address gets encrypted with that public key. And then anything that comes from that IP, anything that comes um, decryptable, <laughs> decryptable. Anything that uh, anything that comes uh, signed with that public key should have come from an IP address associated with it. So anyway, so it, it uses this notion of like pairing uh, cryptographic primitives and um, and tunnel IP addresses to sort of like authenticate users as well as like authenticate the data, which is cool. And then uh, I didn't mention this earlier, but it's implemented as a network interface, so it's kind of cool. And we're ready for our first demo, just like that. All right. So this is going to go really smooth. I can already tell. All right. So um, can you guys see this OK, this terminal? Is that big enough? Yeah? OK, thank you, vocal person in the middle of the room. One more bigger. One more bigger, why not? Is that good? <laughs> All right. Uh, I could never tell when someone's being a heckler or when they're just like trying to be helpful, you know? All right. Um, and then, does that look good? I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, here I'm connected to this um, server in AWS. I'm going to set up WireGuard there as a WireGuard server. You can just see the, that process. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste because I, I, I seem brave, but I'm not. So first, I'm going to be root for everything. There are going to be people that are angry about that, and that's great. Um, I'm going to use tmux. And then um, I'm going to install WireGuard. I have to install WireGuard. Hooray, Ubuntu. Now I have WireGuard. That's cool. OK. Now some interesting things. Let's start configuring it. So what I've done is I've created this file. Um, so there are two sections of this file. There's an interface section and a peer section. You see that? So the interface, this is my private key. You guys can have it. I'm just going to destroy all this very fast as soon as I'm done. So um, this is the private key associated with my WireGuard server. So um, that has a public key, and we'll see that in a minute. Um, the public key goes on the peer, so the peer can encrypt traffic to the server. Um, I also tell it to listen on this port. Um, that's the standard WireGuard port. So if you're a network person and you like looking at PCAP, use your photographic memory. And then uh, I'm going to set up a peer. So this is going to be my laptop. Uh, once I configure my laptop, I'll be 10, 10, 10, 2. Um, and the public key associated with my laptop is going to be this. So this is just. 32 bytes um, on uh, of a 32 byte integer on that 25519 curve. So that's all that is. Super simple, like small key to move around, which is cool. Okay. So we have a configuration file. Um, now we're going to do some system configuration. So I'm just going to tell the kernel 
hey, anything that comes to you that's not for you, just go ahead and route that through. And then um, this NAT rule is just going to um, NAT traffic. In other words, it's going to act as a, route, a NATing router. Okay. And now I'm going to add that WireGuard interface that we talked about using IP Route 2 and add the 10.10.10.1 10, 10, 10, uh, IP address to it. So remember, the client will be 10.10.10.2 10, 10, and the server will be 10.10.10.1. 10, 10, 10, um, and now I'm going to associate that config file with the interface and set the interface up. So if we do like IP link, IP link, um, here's that interface. Cool. And you can also use the, the uh, WireGuard utility WG show. And it'll say, yep, um, this interface is associated with this public key. Uh, I'm not going to show you that, even though I already did. And that's the port it's listening on. Um, that's UDP. And then, sure enough, the peer 10.10.10.2 with this public key is going to be my laptop. We'll configure that next. I don't know if you guys picked up on this little Easter egg, but um, you can actually make these vanity public keys. So all you have to do is uh, solve the discrete logarithm problem, and then you can make any key you want. I'm just kidding. You just uh, generate private keys, and then um, generate the public key from that, and you just forward generate those a million times until you get the keys you want. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. If you solve the discrete logarithm problem, come find me. We'll do a talk. OK. Then we're going to go to our client. Um, I downloaded the client, the WireGuard client, on my laptop already. So it's just called WireGuard. And unfortunately, I can't make this bigger. So if it's hard to see. I apologize. But you do add empty tunnel, and you say uh, B sides, and paste configuration in. So this is the private key on my laptop, and that corresponds with the public key in the peer section on my server, if that makes sense. And then um, I set my address to 10.10.10.2, 10, 10, and you can set a DNS server. And then um, my peer is going to be the server in this case. So if I go back to that terminal, um, WG show, um, KL TDUP uh, matches the public key that's in, my, in the peer section. Um, and then I'm going to say allowed IPs. So what the allowed IPs section tells you is um, if, if traffic comes to this interface with this IP address, send it to that peer, if that makes sense. Um, and so, so what this 000 slash 0 tells you is that any traffic at all will go through the VPN tunnel. Great. And then uh, endpoint is that server in AWS. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to allow it to access my VPN configurations and activate. And first good sign is that that turned green. So I'm already a happy, happy man. And then uh, if I go ahead and on my laptop uh, ping 1010.1, 10, that should be the server. And sure enough, um, 60, sec 60 milliseconds is pretty good. And um, check my public IP address. And that's not so good. So I'm not sure why that's not working. Hey, demo's over. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's not good. Um, did I turn off? Yeah, I turned off Proton. Hmm. Trust me, it's easy. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm going to move on. So um, hopefully we fix it before the next one, because it builds on that. Oh, wait. Can't reach Google, because WireGuard. <laughs> OK, cool. So this is interesting technology, Kevin. Thank you, I agree. Um, but how, how interesting exactly is it? Well, there's this thing in Linux called network namespaces, and it's, it's um, separation in the kernel of different network objects. Um, that's, the, that's the idea. And so when you create a socket in one namespace, um, it remains in that namespace, even if you move whatever has handles to it around. Um, so that's a really interesting property, because um, when you initialize your WireGuard interface, it creates 
it creates your WireGuard interface in a specific namespace, which means it builds that UDP socket that it uses for the tunnel. And so if you move that interface into a new namespace, that tunnel socket stays behind. So that's really interesting. Um, some of you who like deal with this technology are probably already know where I'm going with this. But in Docker, um, one of the ways Docker does isolation is with these kernel namespaces. Um, does process, mount, IPC, and user namespacing, but also network namespacing. And so what you can do is you can create a Docker container, and then you can uh, create a WireGuard interface in the, the host, like the init namespace, and configure it there and everything, and then move it into the Docker container's namespace. And now that Docker container has a WireGuard interface that can talk to the internet um, uh, magically without having any WireGuard software or anything specifically installed on, on the Docker container. So that's my next demo. It's uh, way more complex than that other one, so hopefully it goes okay. Um, what we're gonna do, uh, I still have this laptop terminal on the left, and I have this uh, server terminal on the right, and I'm going to um, create a new Tmux session there. Okay, so. Um, first thing I'm going to do is going to run a new Docker container. I'll explain this Docker command. So what this does is um, Docker run starts a new container. RM says delete this container when I'm done. I don't. I don't. It can be ephemeral. IT says uh, give me this interactive prompt. Um, this interactive TTY, and then uh, network none says don't attach me to any networks. So all I want is a loopback interface. Um, and then I just called it secret, because, you know. And then uh, I'm running it in just vanilla Alpi uh, Alpine, so there's nothing special about this container. So if we do IP link, IP link, link, um, you see all we have is the loopback interface. Um, so that's cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build a new WireGuard interface, move it into this container. Um, so, to do that, I'm going to create a new config file, just like we did previously, um, and it looks very similar. So you have a private key. Um, this time, we don't have a listening port, but that's okay. And then uh, public key, this is the server's public key, and I'm going to send all traffic to it, and that's the server's IP address. So pretty straightforward configuration. Um, now I'm going to do some setup that's going to make working with namespaces a little easier. So pay no attention to that. <laughs> Just creating some symlinks in bar run net namespace directory. Okay, so um, here we go. We're going to create this new interface, WG1, and we're going to put it in the container's namespace. So container is... Uh, secret. I could call it called it earlier. Okay, and then we're going to just paste all these. We're running short on time. Um, in that namespace, I'm going to add 10, 10, 10, 3 to this container's uh, interface, um, and then I'm going to set the configuration file that we just created. We associate that, and then I'm going to put the put the interface up, and then I'm going to make WG1 the default route for that container's namespace. So, um, so try not to freak out, but I'm gonna show you something cool. So now if we go back in our container and we do IP adder, there's a magical interface in here, uh, which is that WireGuard interface that we created in the, the uh, init namespace and moved into the container's namespace. Um, so that's pretty cool. And if we do IP route, um, all traffic, except for 10.10.10 uh, 10, 10 traffic, is going to go through WG1. Just so happens that's the subnet associated with that interface, and so that's going to go through the tunnel also. So any traffic to or from this container can only traverse that tunnel. That's the implication. It's pretty cool. All right. Um, now, back on the server, um, we have a new peer, which is this container. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to its configuration file. So now the server looks like this. You have two peers, my laptop and the container, and then its own interface configuration section. 
And we're just gonna sync that configuration. Now, um, do WG show on the server, two peers. Um, this one is from the container and it hasn't had a handshake yet, hasn't been, hasn't been contacted by the container. Um, and then I showed you this, but if we look in the namespace of the container, um, that's, that's the configuration. And now I'm just gonna run TCP dump. Well, my demo hopefully doesn't fail. So if we're, we're in the container now, which is, again, this container is running in Docker on, a, on an Ubuntu server in the Amazon cloud. My laptop's here at B-Sides. So if I ping 10, 10, 10, 2, which is my laptop, I can't reach it, which is fantastic. Oh, wait. I disconnected from WireGuard. Okay. Still can't. Dang it. <laughs> All right. So on my laptop, I can ping the server. Can I ping the container? I can't. I cannot. Let's see if we can diagnose that. So here's TCP dump, and we see from two, two is pinging to three, and three is responding to two. So I have no idea why it's not working. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. But um, I am on the Wi-Fi here. I think he might have saved me. Well, but it's weird though, because I can, I can ping the server, right? Oh, that's interesting. I'm gonna go with that. Yeah, it's the network, guys. <laughs> Demo's solid, it's the network. I don't know. All right, thank you. Thank you for that, brave audience member. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, it's blocking my slides. Ah, oh, man, network, guys. Ugh. It's the worst. Okay. So, um, there are also some bonus tricks. I showed you the vanity public keys. Um, so my initials were at the beginning of all the public keys that you saw up there. Um, so that's cool, hooray for that. And then, but an, another side note is, you know, that's just a 64 byte string. <clears throat> no, 64 bytes? No, I don't think that's right. Uh, it's just a string of bytes, right? So you can make that, it doesn't have to be like some ASCII, it could be, um, it could be binary data. So what you could do is you could use that for good. You could, use, you could make the first four bytes like the same as your IPv4 address, which would actually be pretty cool. WireGuard wouldn't enforce that like, that IP and, uh, and, and public key are the same match in that way, but it would be cool to put software on top of it that does that. Um, the crypto key routing is also similar to that, but anyway, this is a cool idea. Um, that's it, do you guys have questions? It is a network. The network's just. Ugh. Do you have a hotspot on your phone? I do. Yeah, I could probably try that. Oh, we're out of time, though. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, thank you guys.